right, here we go. For some of us, it's good evening, and for others, it's good afternoon. Now, wherever you are across the globe, welcome to another installment of Get Safe Online Global 24. My name is Andrea Chisholm, and I will be your moderator for the next hour. Now, some of you may be wondering, what exactly is Get Safe Online Global 24? Well, the name says it all. It's the world's longest ever non-stop online safety awareness event with 24 countries participating in 24 hours. And guess what? Jamaica is one of those countries. Yes, we're in a everything. And let me just translate that for some of you who may not understand the Jamaican dialect. Jamaica is involved in a number of partnerships as we try to strengthen our cyber security initiatives. Now, this evening, our country is on the anchor leg, the conclusion of the 24-hour event. Global 24 Jamaica is held through a partnership with Get Safe Online, the Manchester Chamber of Commerce, and Regis. Now, our focus for this session is online safety tips for SMEs and employees. Now, the topic is even more timely because in light of the COVID-19 pandemic, just about everybody is doing business online. Now, let me point you to a section of a report. It's actually called the 2021 Cardin Cybersecurity and Privacy Report, which is done by a company called G5 Security. And that company provides cybersecurity and data privacy services to businesses internationally. Now, this is what the report says. In September, G5 Security analyzed 13,791 websites belonging to businesses and people in the Caribbean. That's a lot. And of that amount, there were 5,838 records of domains with compromised accounts. And that's only part of the story. I'm sure later on, we're going to hear about things like investment scams. Now, we'll talk more about that later. But for now, let us talk about how small businesses can keep safe. And that's where our panelists will come in. So panelists, let me just see you give a wave and a smile to our participants as we kick off this webinar. Now, our first panelist is Shereen Duncan Clark. I'm looking to see if I can see Shereen, but since I am visually challenged, I will leave that to the expert. Well, Shireen is the general manager of Regis. It's a highly innovative organization that provides modern, flexible workspaces to customers, and it partners with companies such as Toshiba, sure you've heard of them, Google, GlaxoSmithKline, and Shireen has a diverse background in finance and marketing. Our next panelist is a lovely gentleman that I met yesterday, is Peter Davies. And Peter, who is in the United Kingdom, is the global ambassador of Get Safe Online outside the UK, and he's working to identify potential partnerships. Now, Peter has over three decades, that's what, 30? Yes, over three decades of service in public safety, working in several areas, including serious and organized crime. He is now a cybersecurity consultant who works in cybersecurity, as I said, among other things, in Europe, the Middle East, and Australia. Our next panelist is Liz Stanton, and Liz is giving you a very, very bright smile. And she is an advisor and expert presenter for the Get Safe Online team. She is also a senior trainer and family protection manager. Liz worked for 25 years in the police service where she played a crucial role in developing and implementing the Safer Schools and Young People Partnership model. And our final panelist is Simone Spence Johnson and she did her undergrad at one of the best universities in the world and that is drumroll right the Northern Caribbean University NCU in Manchester Mandeville I'm sure you're all nodding in approval so you have agreed with me it's carried we're moving on 
Simone also did her master's in uh, business administration management from Nova Southeastern University. And she is currently the director of communications and public affairs for the Manchester Chamber of Commerce. She is also the owner of the Blue Ember Group of Companies. Now, if you would like to know more about our panelists, you can just go to the Facebook page, and that is the Global 24 Jamaica event page, and you'll get much more information about our panelists. All right, don't worry, I'm still within the time limit. I'll be shutting up now. And before I do that, just one other final announcement. This webinar will be interactive. So for those of you or lovely participants who have decided to join us this afternoon, please ensure that you type your questions in the chat because we want to hear from you. We're not just going to be talking. We want to respond to your queries as well. So it's time for me to shut up now and I am going to kick things off with Shereen Duncan-Clark from Regis. Go ahead, Shereen. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for having me. And um, it's a pleasure to really speak about this topic. Um, you know, it's important for me as well to share, you know, what, what is Regis because I'm, I'm coming to you as a representative of Regis and um, I'm just going to bring up something on the screen here. If I can, if I can share my screen, that would be fantastic. So let me, let me just do that. Um, is working on sharing her screen so we can see her lovely PowerPoint presentation, I assume. I think we could start off with Peter Davies, if that's okay with the team. I think they're hearing me quite well now. Shireen is just okay. starting out her screen for a while. So okay, I, listen, I know what that's like. And so um, if it helps, I'll just uh, do, my, do my little bit first. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Peter Davies. I, I'm, I'm a very nice gentleman, according to Andrea, and that's the nicest thing that's been said about me for many years. So thank you very much. Um, I'm the global ambassador for Get Safe Online. And yeah, you can tell by the face, I'm not a digital native. I'm definitely a, a digital migrant, having um, started out in the police service. And I well remember being shown our first fax machine um, in a police station uh, when I had three years service. So that's how far I go back. Uh, but the thing is this, uh, and Liz, who's much, much younger than me, may well say the, 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 the same thing. Um, if, if you are about protecting people, then you know that the risks are going to be different. The risks are going to change. The things you're protecting people from are going to be uh, all, all kinds of different beyond the imagination. But actually, um, you still want to protect people. And that's why after all these decades, uh, I still get excited about um, online safety and cyber security. Um, and that's why it's a real, real pleasure to be here and just say a few introductory comments. So, to, so as to reassure Shireen and also Liz, um, uh, here's the deal. Liz is the expert. She is the person who's really got the great material, the great information to share with you about how to stay safe online, whether you're a small business or an individual. Um, so I'm going to take less time so that she can take more time because what you really want to do is listen to her. So I'm now going to be very, very brief, um, but be assured I'm trying to compress probably two hours of chatter into a couple of minutes. So wish me luck. We have loved working in Jamaica. Uh, we started providing services to Jamaica in April 2019 with a website that's still there today. Please go and look at it, refer to it anytime you've got any questions, getsafeonline.org.jm. Um, we've also been working with ODEM, who uh, have a more than a footprint in Jamaica, uh, to deliver PR and campaign work across the Caribbean since then. Because the reality is, people don't always know where to go for advice. People don't even know they've got a problem sometimes. And so you've got to reach out to them and get the message to them where they are, whether it's through a bus stop, or a billboard or a radio advert. You can't wait for people to come to you. You've got to go and tell them. And in that spirit, we've also uh, had a great time, and Liz particularly has had a great time, uh, getting to Jamaica and delivering workshops in person, face to face with people, not just in Kingston, because let's face it, everybody goes there, but also in, in, in Mandeville and, and Montego Bay. And the quality of our partnerships in Jamaica has been fantastic. I now realize I shouldn't mention the University of the West Indies in a positive way, but I'm going to 
because they were really terrific and their and their centre there for media studies is, 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 has been excellent. Um, the Broadcasting Commission of Jamaica have been fantastic partners. Um, every time we go to Jamaica, which is not often enough, I'm afraid, uh, every time we meet people, it just gets better and better. And so for the coming year, what we're doing in Jamaica, as well as those things, the website and the campaigns, is we are launching our new ambassador scheme. Um, and this is about, with your help, identifying people in Jamaica who would be good advocates for online safety, giving them the training, the expertise, the backup and the materials they may, may need and the confidence they may need, and then getting them to go out there on our behalf and deliver the kind of workshops that Liz was doing last year, all year round, um, uh, in their communities, whether it's business communities, communities of interest or schools or churches or wherever the appetite for online safety is there. And let's face it, as that report shows, um, there's a never ending and growing appetite for online safety. Um, online life was, was tricky enough prior to the global pandemic, but what we've seen across the world, and Jamaica is no exception, um, is record amounts of time people are spending online by remote without the usual controls and protections they might have if they are at school or college or university or indeed in the workplace. And so people as individuals are more at risk than ever, and so are businesses, because people are working by remote, doing transactions by remote in a way they may not have been familiar with, and without necessarily all the safeguards that one normally builds up. So there's never been a bad time to talk about online safety. There's arguably never been a better time than now to talk about it and learn something. And every time I listen to one of our experts, I learn something fresh as well. So I'll be sitting there at the back of the class taking notes, uh, the same as anybody else. So that's really what I wanted to say. Thank you so much for having us. Um, hopefully I've stuck to my time. And Shireen, hopefully I've helped just enable you to, to, to get your presentation set up. That's the last word from me, unless you've got any questions from me. But a real, real thank you. Uh, and what a great way to finish off this event. And actually, I always tell a lie when I say it's the last word because I think you're going to give me a few minutes at the end as well, aren't you, Andrea, uh, with any luck. So um, you'll hear from at the end. Stay around for that, please, because it is worth it. And I'll hand back to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. And yes, you did stay within the time limit. But as you pointed out, we'll be hearing much more from you later on. And now we are going to move back over to Shireen. Shireen, go ahead. Thank you for your patience. As we say in Jamaica, we have to wheel and come again. My, my computer rebooted at the wrong time. So let, let me try that one more time. All right, so thanks for your patience. So as I said, I'm a representative here of Regis. I'm the general manager of, of Regis in Jamaica. And um, I just wanna get this, this up here so you can see what it is I'm, I'm doing. So, if aha uh -huh. right so we are the world's largest provider of flexible workspace solutions so we provide office space co-working meeting rooms virtual office and and flexible working plans um you know during this new way of working now you know especially with what's happening in the world um it's very very important for us to sometimes rethink and um you know have fresh ways of of approaching how we work and where we work and how we balance home and life uh, and work. So I wanted to just go through very, very quickly um, what we do. So Regis, as I said, it's the world's largest provider of flexible workspace. So we have workspace all over the world. We have over 3000 locations. Um, and what we've been doing is we have a presence really in every corner of the world. So, you know, chances are wherever you are in the world, there is a Regis location. Um, you know, whether you need a private office or you need a desk or a co-working space, you know, we provide that solution. And we also allow businesses to scale up or scale down as necessary. They can relocate to another location, another Regis location globally. So that is just a bit of the flexibility that we offer. You can, you can have an office space or a workspace for as long or as short as you need it, or for as small or as large as you need it, right? And we, we try to assist our clients with balancing that home and life. So if you only need to come in a couple of days for the week, we have a plan for that as well. 
Um, of course, you know, how does this whole thing tie in with us? Well, we are a high user of technology. So we use a lot of technology in our operations. Um, you know, even our services that we provide, you know, includes, yes, security on the building, but, you know, secure high speed internet here, um, you know, in addition to the facilities management and all of that. So what I wanted to do is I just wanted to get into some of the ways in which we are trying to ensure that we keep a safe environment technology wise. So as I mentioned before, you know, we use a lot of technology. Um, we have, you know, an online, you have an, an app, we have a client website where, you know, our clients can book meetings, but they can also make payments online. It's also important to know that whenever you're making a payment online, it needs to be a secure web platform. And, you know, just looking out for things like the HTTPS at the beginning of the, the website is, is an important indicator that it's a secure um, website. Um, we also provide, you know, state of the art facilities as well here. You know, we use technology in terms of how we integrate our telecom system and our, our meeting rooms and all of that. Um, but also, you know, we have, you know, a firewall on our, our internet system here. That's also important to block some of the, the known harmful websites that, you know, we can encounter sometimes when browsing. But we also have to be vigilant ourselves and encourage our teams to be vigilant as they navigate the internet. So um, for our teams, you know, we encourage them when working remotely to use VPN, right? The virtual private network, it provides another layer of protection that protects, you know, us from, from hackers who, you know, otherwise would may be able to view the contents of what we're doing. So it's definitely important to use a VPN as another layer. Um, our regional IT department continuously reminds us on how to be safe, you know, be careful of, of emails that you're not too comfortable with um, from unknown sources, or even just check on, you know, the, the ending part of that email to make sure it looks legitimate. So if you see an email coming from a financial institution, um, you know, make sure that it says, for example, Scotia Bank instead of Scotty Bank. You know, that's, a, that's an example of, you know, sometimes the hackers, you know, try to, you know, find ingenious ways to trick you into thinking that you're seeing what you want to see, you know, instead of what they actually have. And also make sure it's coming from a legitimate address as well. And it's not saying, you know, financial institution at gmail.com, right? So it's just those little things that you have to look out for as well. Um, of course, we know, don't click strange links. Don't click, don't open those attachments. It's a trap. So, you know, we just have to remind our teams constantly, just don't click on that stuff, um, you know, and just make sure you verify with the, the sender that this is actually a legit, legitimate document that I should be opening. Um, another little thing, just have a backup, right? Just have a backup copy um, on the cloud. We have a lot of secure cloud platforms now that we can use in the event something gets corrupted on your machine. You can go on the cloud and pull that Pull that information but you have to make sure that is a secure platform as well and of course you know we do have the option to back something up on a hard drive external hard drive or a thumb drive but as as i said again you have to make sure that's stored securely as well especially if you're dealing with client information um, and when working at home and because we have you know our teams may work at home periodically and our clients you know we just want to remind them have the similar vigilance when you're at home as when you're in the office, right? So, you know, if you, if, you were, if you wouldn't usually browse a certain type of website when you're at work, you know, try to avoid doing that if you're working from home. Maybe use your personal computer to do that and just be aware of some of the transactions. So, I mean, those are just some of the, the ways in which, um, you know, we encourage um, internet safety and safety using technology. Um, but I also wanted to touch on something because we are a workspace provider and because of that, um, you know, it seems very strange to people like how, how do we make people safe in a pandemic as a workspace provider? So if you don't mind, I can just um, bring up a, 
another thing here and I'm going to share I'm going to share something with you. So let me just pause it so I can get it restarted. So I just wanted to share with you how we are remaining safe during this un uncertain period of time. And, and by the way, if you have any, any, you know, a quick question or two, you can, you can definitely, you know, type that in and I'll, I'll have a look at that. So let me see if I can. I can get my screen shared here. All right. Welcome to your new way of working right on your doorstep. We've created a safe environment for you and your team by taking the principles of physical distancing and adapting them for the workplace. This includes how people move around our locations with clear information and protocols in place to ensure everyone's safety. We have also reconfigured our meeting rooms to enable social interactions at a safe distance. And we're working to the highest standards of hygiene with frequent touchpoint and workspace cleaning to meet global health and safety regulations. Our support teams are on hand 24 seven to help with any questions and concerns and our in-centre teams are working harder than ever to keep people safe and working productively. We can help you find short-term space whilst the future is still uncertain, or enable long-term remote working setups on a global scale. Speak to us today and find a new way of working in our new world. All right, thank you so much, everyone. And I'm going to hand over to you, Andrea. All right, thank you very much, Shereen. And already we see a question coming in the chat, but we'll have our question and answer session at the end of the presentations. So participants do remember, you can still pose your questions or comments in the chat and we'll take them at the end. Now we're going to move over to Liz Stanton, who is going to bring us back to some basics, some things that we need to know as we try to protect ourselves online. Liz, it's over to you. Okay, thanks very much. I'm just gonna um, share the screen. Just bear with me a minute. Okay, hope everyone can see that. Thanks very much for the induction, uh, introduction anyway. And Cherie, it, it's great to see that you um, are including all your staff and your visitors and everything to your buildings. Um, and some of the points that you've obviously touched on, I'm gonna to be touching on as well. It's, good, it's, it's about back to basics, basically. Let's face it, there's so much cybersecurity advice available these days that many people find it hard to know where to start. But start we must if we are going to be protecting our businesses. We all know that cyber criminals don't discriminate and often use the same methods to hack organizations and individuals. We've seen the headlines that high profile data losses can cause and the devastation that ransomware brings. But did you know that 80% of all data loss is caused by human error? It may not be the top of every small firm's list, but it is essential to plan ahead and have a strategy to place in place um, in the event of a breach or obviously a demand. So before we look at the threats, I just want you to think about your own behaviours and knowledge and ask yourself these questions. How much do you know about online security? Do you know enough? Do you use the same password for multiple online accounts and services? Well, you shouldn't. If somebody gets hold of them, they've got access to all your accounts. And how often do you check for updates? Ideally, this should be set to automatic. And lastly, how familiar are you and your staff with policies and procedures from working from home? Because it's no exaggeration to say that actually your business could depend on this. Well, we know that people are more accepting of learning when it's actually personal. So please make your, personal, make your training personal and just don't assume that every employer has a technical background. Keep it simple, make it part of the induction and definitely keep it high on the agenda at all times. Well, who could pose a threat? What are the business risks? Well, we're looking at your money, reputation, data, intellectual property, IT equipment, IT based services such as your websites, payment systems, these could all be at risk from the cyber criminals. Criminals are actually looking to steal from you, whether that's data or money. 
Well, data can take many forms and could include client details, personal information, payment information, or even your product details. Or they could just actually want to disrupt your systems so that your business can't actually function. And as I said earlier, 80% of all data loss is caused by human error. Attacks would be defeated by embedding basic information and security practices for all your staff to follow. There's so many threats that it could be, you know, it can't just be left to one person to tackle it. It isn't just the IT department. And let's face it, most businesses don't have an IT department. It's one person. Well, why? Because employees may send out conflicting or sensitive information to the wrong people or actually in an unsecure way. Let's take mandate fraud, for example. It's so easy for staff to fall for phishing emails asking for money to be transferred to a different account that they usually pay the money into. You need to verify all invoices as well as requests to change bank account details. Check your bank stamp statements on a regular basis and speak to the bank immediately if you see something wrong. And when it actually comes to finances, it's always good to have an extra pair of eyes, an extra additional personnel to check and verify when an email does actually come in or a call request to change financial details. Well, I just want to touch on ransomware as we've seen a massive rise in, de in demand and there's actually no guarantee for a um, safe return of your data. And I want to share here the story of Aaron Brewery because they became a victim and how simple it was executed. The virus was introduced in an email. They had advertised job vacancies on the website and out of the blue, they started getting applicants from all over the world. They just assumed that one of the colleagues had advertised the post far and wide. However, this wasn't the case. The attackers had taken their website vacancy and posted it on some international job sites. They were getting three or four emails a day with attached CVs and, in, and amongst them um, was the actual virus and when the CV was opened it actually took effect. The software then started to encrypt the systems starting with the backups and working through the files on the computers and then onto the central server. They were first then with a ransom demand. They didn't actually pay but that also came to a cost for them. They lost three months of data, which they hoped would be retrieved with the backup files. But of course, that all takes time, money and trust of the customers. So firstly, let's look who actually could pose a threat to you. Well, your competitors wanting to obtain confidential company data, just wanting to disrupt your operations. Think reputational damage and the cost this could be to you. And your customers, well, you may have criminals pausing as customers. They can use a number of methods to deceive you, like using false personal details, forged currency, or someone else's card payment details to pay for goods. And then you've got your suppliers. If your business enables access to systems by others in the supply chain, ensure they, process in play, they have processes in place to protect your information as well. And then thinking about it, is it possible that your own staff could be a threat? Well, your employees may have access to a significant amount of confidential data and information. And if they're disgruntled employees, they may steal this with the intention of passing it on to competitors or even to the highest bidder. Staff may also be tricked or socially engineered into providing confidential information too. And then we've got the hackers and the script kiddies, all wanting to show off the skills and prove to others that they can breach your security just by using somebody else's scripts. We mustn't discount this group because, as you may recall, the person who executed the NHS WannaCry ransomware virus didn't make the virus. They just used tools that somebody else did. And what about the criminals themselves or those that are part of organised criminal groups? Well, that takes it to another level completely. They are looking to steal from you. These groups run businesses themselves. They've got HR departments, offer 24-7 helplines and online chat facilities. They will impersonate companies. They'll get big orders dispatched, usually overseas on credit, which of course, they've got absolutely no intention of paying. So let's go back to basics. Firstly, prioritize the risk and manage it. What's important to your business? And why is it important? And what actually are you doing to protect them? Look at where you need the most protection by identifying your crown jewels. 
which should be the most things valuable to your organisation. So things like personal data, intellectual property, public facing websites. Then look to identify what electronic information is essential to keep your businesses running. For example, contact details, emails, calendars and essential documents. Find out where all this information is stored. If it's on a single machine in the office or in a remote server, is it in the cloud? Who manages it? Is it managed by a third party? And who has access to this? And how often is it backed up? Remember, you're only as secure as your last backup. Then we've got your processes and systems. These are quite, uh, quite crucial to your information and keeping your business running. So for example, the website where your customers place orders. Keep a hard copy of your key partners, build relationships with them as this will help in the event of an incident and make sure it's stored in a place that everyone can reach in times of panic. So touching on a few basic tips, which I know Shereen's touched on as well, but let's get you started. Password security is something that we all know about and yet it continues to be the main reason that we become victims of crime. This just brings home the importance of not using the same one password for everything, because if one of your accounts is compromised, the criminals have access to everything. So always use passwords that are complex and unique to each account and service that you use. Password managers are worth looking at if you really do struggle to remember. It's always best to get paid ones as they do offer more security. And then have a look at enabling 2FA, two-factor authentication on your accounts, emails, social media platforms, and even for WhatsApp. It's free and it adds an additional layer of security. Always keep software, apps and operating systems update, as updates often contain um, security fixes. If you can, set programs and apps to update automatically. Have a software policy in place that includes usage, updates, licenses, and what to do with redundancy um, programs and apps. But just remember, the threats don't just appear. You've got to have done something to let them in, like installing software from links and not from the official site, or by clicking links in dodgy websites. Or it could just be as simple as, the antivirus is out of date or you're running an old version of software. Please don't use public Wi-Fi to transfer sensitive information such as credit cards or documents. If possible, use mobile networks, which will have built-in security. You can also use the virtual pirate networks, the VPNs. That's a technique that encrypts your data before it's sent across the internet, but be aware of using any free VPNs. Keep your Wi-Fi switched off, as it'll search and connect to unsecure sites when available. And have you got policies in place if equipment is lost or stolen? And then we've got, what about the office notifications? So imagine Peter, my colleague, if he went away on holiday, wishful thinking, and you put an out of office message on his email and phone. It says how long he's away for and gives details of who to contact in his absence. It gives names, address, phone numbers and emails. Well, any good criminal can use this information to their own advantage. They could send a direct email to that person and make it look and sound like they do business with Peter on a regular basis. And then we've got the growing practice with small businesses allowing staff to use their own devices for work purposes. Do you have a policy to cover that? A policy will provide a safety net against legal repercussions and mobile system costs. Have a policy that covers data deletion, location tracking, and know how to remotely wipe or lock, clear, uh, wipe or lock it if your um, device is lost or stolen. And if a personal device is being used for business, who else has access to that device and information? If others are going to use the same device, it's worth setting up separate accounts for them, as we know how easy it is for a child to click on a pop-up without you knowing. And what does the internet say about you and your business? Well, set up Google Alerts for yourself and your business. It's free and it'll give you an indication who else is using your details. Know your enemy. Be aware of fake websites. Some criminals will even pay for their bogus website so that it can be displayed on the top of the search engines. Don't click on links and emails and texts, WhatsApps or social media posts or open email attachments if the source isn't 100% known and trustworthy. Remember, it's easy to spoof an email address or even a phone number. 
Keep your backup separate from your computer, whether it's on a USB stick or on a separate drive or even a separate computer. Access to data backups should be restricted so that not, um, they're not permanently connected to your computer. And while we're on the subject, think before you plug anything into your work devices, a memory stick or even your phone, because that too could be corrupted. So just to finish, um, as an individual may be thinking, I'll deal with that when it happens. As a business, you may be asking the wrong questions like, are we okay? Will we be safe? We need to flip that on its head and realize that no individual or business is 100% safe. You may already have been a target, but just don't know it yet. So start thinking, what are the risks? What can I do right now to ensure I am safe as possible? You'll find free and in-depth information on all how to protect yourself and all your families and friends and of course your business on the website. And just to remind you, all the information is free and so easy to follow. So thanks very much. I'll hand you back over. Thank you very much, Liz, for those uh, timely reminders. And do remember that if you have questions for Liz about your online security, you can type them in the chat and we'll respond to them at the end. For now, we'll be doing a quick poll. So participants, this poll will be popping up on your screen any minute now. The question is on a scale of one to five with one being the lowest, how important is internet safety to you? That's a poll question on a scale of one to five, with one being the lowest, how important is internet safety to you? Okay, while you answer that question, let's now turn over to Simone Spence. Go ahead, Simone. Thanks, Andrea. I was here taking notes while Liz was giving her presentation. I mean, my mind was just blown. I'm thinking about all these things for my personal business, as well as our members. Wow, it's a lot to take in, but we do need to take it in. It's very important. Now, I'm representing the Manchester Chamber of Commerce. I'm the Marketing and Communications Director. And just to tell you a little bit about what the Chamber is and what we have been doing. Now, the Manchester Chamber of Commerce exists to be the united voice of business, promoting entrepreneurship, community development, and economic progress. And we do strive to identify and to serve all the needs of our members. So since COVID-19, we have shifted to our virtual meetings, as I think most people have. Um, it's customary for us to send out e-bites to our members, but we also do follow-up phone calls to ensure, you know, membership participation and engagement, right? We support quite a few initiatives on a monthly basis. And we are a nonprofit organization and we're volunteer members. So <laughs> we, we, our work is done based on membership fees and donations as well. But we do strive to donate to quite a few requests on a monthly basis. But we do have one standing item that we as an executive had decided at the beginning of the year. And it's for a center called the Ebenezer Rehabilitation Center. And they house men, young and old, who really have been displaced, you know, more or less homeless, and they take care of their basic needs, accommodation, food, medication, stuff like that. And where necessary, they rehabilitate them to bring them back into society. So at the beginning of COVID, we had partnered with a local seamstress to make some reusable masks for them. So we had donated those and a bunch of cleaning, san cleaning and sanitation supply. And, you know, it really is, they had to really be vigilant in terms of keeping the center clean because you know you have some of these elderly people have underlying conditions so we were really proud of that and they were so happy to receive that donation so that was a highlight for us so we just wanted to share that as the executive body at the beginning we really met and we sat down and we spoke about okay what are the immediate needs for our members and we realized that a lot of the members really they wanted some encouragement. They wanted, you know, a virtual hug <laughs> and really information on what they can do on a myriad of topics. So we decided to partner with Action Coach Jamaica to bring a webinar on how they could pivot their business in this climate. So they spoke about different strategies that they could use. They had a lot of insight and um, 
different things that were really relevant to the region in terms of maybe you know filing your taxes, um, looking at different strategies that you can implement with working from home, stuff like that. So it was really, really well received by our members. So that was a partnership that we were also proud of. And we were glad that we could bring that information to the members. During the monthly meetings, though, we do look for presentations that are relevant, topics that are really relevant to what's happening now. A few of these examples are insurance. So we had an insurance rep did a presentation on, you know, insuring your business. As like Liz said about a lot of the stuff, a lot of the errors are caused by our employees or even ourselves, and we're not looking at the overall picture of what could happen and can our business really function if something can, if something goes wrong right now, you know? So we look at business insurance, we look at insurance for ourselves and for our children right now and how, how that will help to protect, you know, and they had quite a few packages that were reasonable because we know a lot of persons are in a financial crunch right now. So that was really helpful information to them. And we also had a um, person talk about, you know, different strategies, business coaching, leadership. And we also had our health practitioners talk about the health tips because whatever we do physically, you know, it affects us here as well and vice versa. And we also partner with different law enforcement officers and different organizations in our area and they brought updates. So that was helping with different curfews and different things that were going on that was relevant to the time. We, important for this webinar here, we actually had a presentation on online shopping, the persons that shop on online platforms, and they were talking about um, increasing security, increasing the safety and security about purchasing stuff online and what we should do. And a lot of the things Liz mentioned, I feel the stuff they had mentioned there, you know, in terms of your credit card and using it on public, public Wi-Fi and stuff like that. So um, in our membership, we also have different sectors of business. So we had persons in the IT technology sector, and they shared a lot of the different tips and offered expert advice to our membership as well. And we also encourage our members to speak to their financial partners who constantly, they publish a lot of tips and tools for our clients to stay safe online. And I should shout out to our president, Kenesha Dwyer Powell, and she represents GMMB. And I know they really do put out a lot of tips and, and tools and different things that our members can use. And we do look to them for a lot of advice. And we recognize that as you know, we have to adapt to the new norms and <laughs> rules for COVID, we have to really increase our online usership and you know, seek seeking different ways to share this data. And I'm so happy that we are a part of this collaboration here. And Liz, I'm gonna go and take your presentation and just send out a lot of tips to our members. And it's, it's so awesome that we really have that at our fingertips that we can share with our membership. And we're very happy for that. In addition to that seminar, we have another one coming up this month. Well, I would think it's November. We'll be hosting a social media, well, we'll be training them on using the social media platforms. But a few of our members are of the, I want to say, um, not so technically versed, <laughs> so we really have to train them as to how to use these platforms and, you know, for them to stay safe online as well. So I coined, this is my closing, coming down to my time now, <laughs> I coined an acronym. And it probably encapsulates a few of the tips that you guys had shared. So let me pull up my notes here. Okay, so S is for stay current. So we have to make sure the information that we, we get is up to date. Information changes so rapidly. And adjust and align. That's for the A. We have to be flexible. <laughs> if 2020 has taught us nothing, it has taught us we need to be flexible <laughs> in every area. So if we're flexible and we, we need to be able to be flexible and align ourselves, we can have, I think earlier in our presentation, I think Sherry would agree with me, we have to have plan A, plan B, and plan C in this virtual world, because we never know. That takes me to the F. 
So if we adjust ourselves, it allows us to filter. Filters are important for ourselves. Our businesses. And we need to look at how much information we let out and how much information we let in. I have decided to adjust the safe to safe her. So we don't want to end up in the virtual ER, the virtual emergency room. So I've decided to go with our own ER, which is engage responsibly. So I hope you guys have been following S-A-F-E-R, safer. So we have to engage responsibly. If the, the virtual world is not all negative, but there are lots of negative things out there, but if we take it upon ourselves to engage responsibly, we can keep ourselves safe. I thank you so much. This has been my presentation, and I look forward to partnering with you guys again and to share this information with our members. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shireen. And I'm sure we're going to be staying current and adjusting and aligning and engaging responsibly as we take your acronym into consideration. It's now time for our question and answer session. A question came in for Shireen. Shireen, a question came from one of our participants. Uh, in terms of Regis, do you cater to home spaces for homeschooling now? And what are the prices? Hmm. All right, thanks for that question. So, I mean, we are a professional space and I mean, you know, we do tend to cater to businesses, entrepreneurs, startups, but we have had instances where students may need to come in because they have an exam. And because of that exam, they need a secure, stable environment, stable internet connection. Um, are you able to hear me by the way? Yes? I am, I am hearing Great. you from my end. Great. Right. So it, we've had instances where, you know, someone may need to sit their exam, they need stable internet, they need, you know, a backup generator, everything in place so that, the, you know, the, the light doesn't go, the internet is, is, is strong, and they need a quiet um, space. And that's not a shared space at home. So we've had instances where we've hosted folks who, want, who needed to come in because at home it just wasn't quiet enough, wasn't stable enough. And so we have facilitated that. Um, we can also facilitate maybe group projects, um, you know, if someone needs to have a small meeting room or an office just for the day, um, just to do meetings, we can do that. But in terms of maybe day to day for the little kiddies, I think it may be a little distracting. Um, and I would say in terms of pricing, we have a, a wide range. I'm, I'd, I'd love to invite everyone to go to the nearest Regis location and do a tour. We have tours every single day of our facilities. Um, in Jamaica, we're in New Kingston on the Panjam building, that's Nutsford Boulevard. And um, if you want to book a tour, just go to regis.com. So what I'll do is I'll type in the, um, in the section here, um, the website. So you can go to regis.com and you can actually schedule a tour um, and, and get um, answers to your pricing questions there as well. Okay, thank you very much, Shireen. All right, I have a question here for Liz. Liz, in your presentation, you spoke about passwords. Uh, I remember speaking with a tech consultant a few months ago, and since some of us on this link are Jamaicans, he gave a suggestion about persons using Jamaican slangs as password because they are spelled differently. So say for instance, I want to say GWE as my password, I would put G-W-E-H. Chances are nobody will know what it is. But Liz, just talk to us about, first of all, how do you go about um, preparing a strong password? That's one. And secondly, how important is multi-factor authentication and how it works? Right, okay. Um, with you saying about using your slang, I guess everybody in Jamaica will understand that slang and know that slang, so that goes out the window straight away. Um, what we say is look at three random words. Try and not use something from the dictionary, um, something completely random. So, for example, snow cold hat. That means something to me, but to anybody else it wouldn't mean anything. And then you just put a bunch of characters in there. So you have your you have your three random words as your um, your formula, and then you will put um, a couple of um, characters before and after, and say you're using it for Facebook. So you'd put F at the beginning, 
um, Snow Cold Hat, change and put some characters in there, and then Facebook K at the end, because that's at the end of Facebook, and then however many characters is in Facebook. So use your formula for every password that you're going to be using, but just change it and tweak it so that you remember. So if it's Instagram, you'll use Instagram I, so you get the gist of that. Now with two-factor authentication, um, or um, as you say, multi-factor authentication, most sites now, most um, platforms will use it. What you need to do is go through to your account, look on your settings, um, and then once you get to your settings, then you'll have a look where it says 2FA or multi-factor authentication. Enable that, and then it'll send you through, um, it'll talk you through a process. You'll put in, if you're going to use a telephone number, it can be your mobile number, it can be a landline number, um, and in some cases you can actually do it via an email address as well. And then what happens then is that if somebody else is using your, um, trying to use your account or get into your account from a different device or even a different area, it will send you a notification to whatever you've registered. So if it's your mobile, it'll send you a notification. Um, and then it, you will verify if it's you or if it isn't you. And then you can carry on what you're doing. So it's like a, an additional layer. It's like what you do with your bank. It's something you know uh, and something you have. So something you know is your password and your email address, probably. Something you have is the password off your mobile phone. So you put them together and then obviously it creates that layer and, and um, verifies that it's you. All right. Uh, thank you, Liz. Uh, Peter, uh, very, should I say, in simple terms, could you just explain for us what exactly is the dark web? And if my information ends up there, what will happen? How will I know if it's there? Okay, great question. I've got a two hour presentation about the dark web, which I can happily start off now, or I'll try and give the, the brief version. Um, the dark web was actually, not many people know this, invented by the United States Navy. Um, it was developed so that there could be secure communications impossible to intercept by foreign governments or, or, or other armed forces. Um, and that's its original intention. Um, because it was so good, it's now been adapted uh, for use by a lot of people who want to keep their activities and their information secret from anybody who might want to investigate it. Um, including from police and law enforcement. Um, regrettably, lots of different versions of software for the dark web are readily available online. Now, my advice to anybody who is now fascinated by the dark web and fancies taking a look is don't. Um, if you have legitimate uh, reasons for being online, you don't need to go there for anything. Um, the dark web is a bit like, I've used this analogy before, it, um, Going into the dark web for a legitimate reason is a bit like going into the worst bar you've ever seen just to have a glass of water. It might be possible to get to the bar and just have a glass of water and leave, but you're going to be rubbing shoulders with some uh, people you'd rather not, uh, and you don't quite know what's going to happen on your way in and the way out. One of the uses of the dark web these days is for organised crime, and it's where people will trade the most appalling child abuse imagery um, which is not something we want to talk about, but trust me, that, that's where people go. It's also uh, the place where the market for stolen data uh, is also uh, basically held. Um, so if somebody wants to go and buy your personal credentials, if they've already been stolen from somewhere, so that they can try and hack into your bank account or go to your company and try and uh, fish you or spoof you or scam you or, or do any one of those frauds uh, that Liz spoke about, that's where they'll go for that information. Um, so it's also a place where illicit goods and drugs, firearms and so on, get sold internationally. Um, so there are all kinds of nasty stuff going on the dark web. It is not completely, not completely as designed, impossible to investigate people. And I've been involved in investigations that actually successfully detected crime being taken place over the dark web. But it is nevertheless, it's the criminal market place of the online world. So please don't go there if you're curious. Uh, and it is not so the highest bidder. So if you want to avoid that whole thing, listen to what Liz said, go to the website, get the advice, and keep it always 
in mind. Thanks for giving me the chance to give what I hope was a brief answer. Okay. Uh, thank you, Liz. Is we had a question coming in. You alluded to it earlier, but just to re-emphasize the point, someone is asking if it's okay to use one part. Okay, I'm actually just typing that now, just saying absolutely not. Um, I'll just send that out. Absolutely not. Because if that password um, is compromised at all, and you've used it for absolutely everything, then Uh, for you so if i get a link how do i know if it is a legitimate link or not what can all right so the first thing i would say is just don't click the link um unless it is that you're expecting to get a link from someone that you trust or the person you trust has said to you um you know you can look at the link sometimes and you can see you know what are some of the characters in the link but it's really important to just check with the sender if you're not really sure if the link is safe you know just just pick up the phone or, or send them a message separately and say you know did you send this you know if you're not really sure um if it's someone that you're confident you know it's it's a trusted sender then you know and you're expecting a link sure but always Thank you very much, uh, Shireen. Uh, Simone, this one is for you. You spoke about some of the training sessions that the Manchester Chamber of Commerce usually have for businesses. If I am a small business in the area or if I'm anywhere else in Jamaica, because you have different, uh, should I say, divisions across the country, how do I get involved? How do I? Okay, thanks, Andrew, for that question. So to become a member of the Chamber, we have an application process. So we have an application form which we can email to you. Uh, we will want to come and visit your business to ensure that you know it's a legitimate business <laughs> and you're not just saying that it's a business. But we also come and visit, you know, just to get to know you, introduce ourselves, and we'd also love to see your business registration. So that's a part of our our mandate to ensure that we see the registration along with the application, and then you can become a member. And you know, there are a lot of benefits to being a member. This Case in point, this webinar. <laughs> so we partner with people to bring stuff like this to you. And we're on all the social media platforms and we also have a website. Thanks, Andrew. Right, there we go. Thank you very much, Simone Spence Johnson from the Manchester Chamber of Commerce. Well, we are almost out of time, but before we go, I'm going to give Peter an opportunity to give us some final remarks. Thank you very much. And I promise, promise, promise I'll be brief. Um, three things from me, uh, and then a word from our sponsor, if that's okay. Um, the first thing is listening once again to all this great advice about staying safe online. It took me back a few years um, to uh, what, what used to be called the Detectives ABC. Uh, and that was how you went about investigating a crime. And uh, it was uh, assume nothing, believe nobody, and check everything. And actually, that's uh, S Simon, with the great uh, uh, respect to, to your acronym, which I, which I love. Uh, actually, um, however you do it, uh, just I, I think actually ABC still applies. It's a bit of a hostile view on the world, but it works for investigators. And actually in this uh, minefield uh, uh, that we, we see as cybersecurity, it may be a good mindset to have. Now, of course, there are millions and millions and millions, vast percentage of transactions, interactions online uh, uh, are not afflicted by the kind of things we talk about, but you don't need many. You don't need many to come to serious harm as a business or an individual. So maybe assuming less, uh, believing less, and checking more might be an appropriate piece of advice. But I am showing my age. Um, the second thing I, I, I'd just like to, to say is, uh, Simone, it sounds to me as you've got some uh, real um, uh, potential candidates to become Get Safe Online Ambassadors. And actually, I'm just wondering, anybody who's part of this event, 
if actually you just want to make people safer, it might start with your family or your community or church, uh, get in contact with us. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll leave my email address on here in the chat, but get hold of ODEM. Plenty of ways to find us. Find us via the, the website, getsafeonline.org.jm, and let us know. We have nine fully recruited and trained ambassadors in Jamaica already. We'd love to have more. It's a big place. Lots of people need to learn about online safety. Nine people can't cover the whole country as far as I can see. So please line up. And, and if it's a good way of spreading good advice uh, in chambers of commerce and communities of interest like, them, like that, then that's what we're here to help with. Um, so uh, please do not, don't regard this as the end of our conversation. Um, the last thing I'll say before I do hand over to a word from our sponsor is um, if I look slightly uh, older, uh, it's not just because I am, it's because we've been doing this for 24 hours now. Uh, 24 hours ago, uh, I was in Fiji helping to launch the first session. Um, uh, unfortunately, um, I've done all this without leaving uh, home because of technology. I would have loved to, to do the grand tour, but there we go. But since then, Liz, um, who doesn't look tired at all, you've noticed, uh, has actually been working hard along with other members of the team. And we have been in Samoa, Tonga, the Solomon Islands, Nauru, New Zealand, Tuvalu, Vanuatu, Kiribati, Papua New Guinea, Rwanda, Scotland, England, Northern Ireland, Wales, Barbados. Um, it's a lot to remember. Um, so we've been safe online, remember the basics. Um, and it's been the most fantastic adventure for us. And the reception that people like yourselves have given us has been first rate. It all makes sense um, if we keep our eye on the ball and regard us as ongoing partners for the future. Uh, well, James Cleverly, MP, uh, was kind enough to record a brief message. About All right, and we should be hearing from the Right Honourable James Cleverly right now. You can go ahead with the video. The internet is an integral part of life for so many of us, and even more so since COVID-19 swept the globe. Here in the UK, nearly 9 in 10 adults and 99% of 12 to 15 year olds are online. That represents a significant target for both cyber criminals and harmful content. Never has it been more important to focus our efforts on keeping people safe online. It's therefore a pleasure to give my support to Get Safe Online's Global 24 event, the world's longest non-stop online safety awareness campaign, whilst the UK is still chair in office of the Commonwealth. Operating on behalf of the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office, in addition to the UK, Get Safe Online operates in 26 countries across the globe, providing engaging and localised online safety advice to millions of people. To date, with funding from the FCDO, Get Safe Online has launched 22 websites across the Caribbean, Pacific and Rwanda, with almost a million visits to the site. It's also held over 22 workshops and reached over 1.1 million through their campaigns, with the potential of reaching many more in the coming months through an exciting ambassador scheme, which will train local advocates. In 2018, all 53 Commonwealth countries committed to take action on cyber security by agreeing the Commonwealth Cyber Declaration. The declaration is the world's largest and most geographically dispersed intergovernmental commitment on cyber security cooperation. Since then, more than five and a half million pounds has been invested in supporting Commonwealth countries to implement this declaration. Through our Commonwealth Cyber Programme, we have held almost 100 capacity building events in over 30 countries, training over a thousand individuals. Every Commonwealth country has benefited in some way from UK-funded cybersecurity capacity building support. And we are now continuing with this work and building on its success this year under the new Cybersecurity and Technology Programme. This includes the work of Get Safe Online and the Global 24 event. I do hope you enjoy the vast array of activities planned under Global 24. Starting in Fiji, with a roundtable discussion with business groups and finishing in Jamaica with a training presentation with a host of other events in between. I'd like to take this opportunity 
to support our collective efforts to raise cybersecurity awareness and make the cyber world a safe and secure place. Thank you. So do remember to visit the website getsafeonline.org. And if you're interested in being an ambassador, visit the website, sign up, and you can get the details. And you can also contact Shereen at Regis, as well as Simone Spence at the Manchester Chamber of Commerce. And I'm pretty sure if you search online, you'll also get some contact information for Liz. But the organizers of this webinar will be reaching out to our participants to ensure that we keep you abreast of all that is happening. Thank you so much for spending your evenings or your afternoon with us. Have a wonderful evening, or should I say night? Huh. Either way, take care and goodbye.